I'm gonna have nightmares about this fucking peel and no one should ever have to own such a horrid thing. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gitty Mary and today we have to talk about Amazon must-haves. Now this is a whole series of videos in and of itself, so let me know if this is something you want to see more of. The thing is, I was recently on TikTok and I don't know what happened on my For You page, but the main thing that I saw over and over again were Amazon Kitchen must-haves. And we're playing really fast and loose with the term must-have um, because none of these things seemed like essentials, seemed like something you just needed to have. Now, I have always cooked. I've cooked since I was a small child. I recently published a gourmet cookbook as well. I know my way around the kitchen and um, I have some notes. <laughs> of course, there's no hate to the creators I'm highlighting. It's meant to be lighthearted, but it's also meant to say that we don't need all this shit and perhaps making a living off of your Amazon affiliate link where you get people to buy shit under the false pretenses that these things are must-haves when they in fact just make life harder for you. I don't know. Anyway, okay, without much further ado, let's get into it. The first thing, and I might end up becoming a little bit unpopular saying this, but I think someone needs to say it. Air fryers. Air fryers? are not must-haves in your kitchen. Full transparency, I have an air fryer, Facebook Marketplace all the way, baby, but it's just an oven. It does what an oven does. The PR for air fryers is through the roof. It is so impressive because they really made us all believe that this does something exceptional that no other kitchen appliance can do. I don't know if every country has the same craze with air fryers, but Denmark is Poppin'. Everyone and their mother are getting air fryers. It's effective, it's quick, but it's just an extra piece of appliance and you need to sort of clean it up every time you use it. It's not as convenient as some advertisers make it out to be. So if you're thinking about getting an air fryer, but you don't really kind of know, don't. It makes okay fries. It's that, that's all I can say. It makes okay fries. But I just don't know if that's worth getting a new appliance for. And it's so big, it takes up my entire counter space. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to people. If you have one, use it. But it's not, it, but it's not essential. It's not essential. And I said what I said. Now, if you've been on the internet for a hot second, you have seen this as well. The fridge stock restock videos, the kitchen restock vibe, it's all over the place. And I have notes, so a lot of these dispensers that a lot of people are buying are completely pointless. So a lot of these dispensers, you can pour your groceries, you can pour your liquids, your oils, your coffee syrups, you can pour your flour, your sugar, whatever, you can pour that into the container. But very rarely, as you can also see in a lot of these videos, the entire product can fit into the container. So you'll need a different location for the remainder, for the packaging, and then you can have your aesthetic product out on the counter, but then you have, you're just taking up twice as much space as if you just used the packaging. I don't necessarily see the appeal of switching up the containers and using small stickers and labels to put on because also, let me be real with you guys, putting labels on stuff like this, it's gonna look gross at some point. You have your oily, sticky fingers on that container one time with the white sticker on it, and it's gonna be ruined. And this is another kind of kitchen restock container that I just don't see the point in using. But these dispensers for drinks, it's the people that want their kitchen to look like a store, and I could not imagine anything less appealing. <laughs> Kitchen gear manufacturers will jump through any hoop to sell you something that could be replaced with a knife. And I want that written on my tombstone. The amount of mandolin slices, the amount of weird, small, punchy, Dyson's chop bullshit products, all of these can be replaced with a knife. Now, I will say that for people with certain disabilities, these products can be really, really nifty. It gives people with disabilities and movement issues some sort of agency in their own lives. And I think that's really important to remember. But for able-bodied people, this seems silly. And also in this specific TikTok, she is pointing out that then you can chop your food without touching the food. Evenly and store the food without touching it. This You're eating it. I've seen a lot of the mandolin dicing, slicing products, you know, where you punch something something into a container and then magically you have brunoir cubes or you have slices, you have potato chips, whatever. Um, you need a lot of pressure and a lot of strength to push an onion or a potato 
through these things. And often a whole vegetable can't fit in it, so you need to slice it or divide it with a knife anyway. So you're already using your knife, so you can't not use a knife anyway. You need a knife anyway. Still the point stands with disabilities, but overall I think this is so many extra steps added to your kitchen routine that it will make cooking more difficult. It's also more dishes to clean up, which I don't think is very smart. And the risk of products like these breaking, because they're made of so many small individual parts, Risks are huge for these breaking, um, and when they break, they will be useless. The absolutely most sustainable and most handy thing is to use a knife. And if you're in a hurry and you need to chop an onion real fast, you can also simply use a food processor. Just give it a few seconds in a food processor and then you're good to go. Having all of these small mechanisms feel really unnecessary. <laughs> the spiralizer is doing something to me. I remember the time where everyone was allergic to pasta, so we needed to replace pasta with vegetables. We needed to make zucchini noodles and we needed to make them fast. Which means that any kind of product like this is just sort of... Mm, this is a very unnecessary way of processing vegetables. Of course it's one of these things like if you want to, if you prefer eating your vegetables like this, of course do that. Most people have a grater, a cheese grater, you can grate your vegetables on that if you want them smaller. But this seems like such a gimmicky thing buying a product that can only do this. Whenever I look for new kitchen stuff or whenever I'm acquiring new kitchen stuff, also secondhand stuff by the way, I'm looking at whether or not this has multiple purposes or a single purpose. So having a lot of stuff like this that can only do one thing, it takes up a lot of your space, it's kind of unsustainable. If you can find products with multiple purposes, then we're starting to really get at it, like that's nice. But we can also look at it as something you will use. Is this something you will actually get the use out of? Because we have metal, we have plastic, all of these materials come with quite the impact. So if you're just gonna use it once or twice for a gimmick, perhaps do something else. It's not worth the resource extraction, the manufacturing, the processing, uh, the shipping, the packaging, all that kind of stuff. If you're using it a couple of times, that's just not gonna be worth it. If you would use this every single Tuesday, go for it. And that's with any of these products, like go for it. It's just, it's just not necessarily what the reality looks like for most people. I said like, I know shit about your life, I don't, but that's my vibe. Anyway, this makes me intensely angry. The handheld vacuum cleaner. The thing is, with any of these Amazon off-brand vacuum cleaners and any kind of electric appliance, I have zero faith. I have zero faith in these lasting at all. And the thing is, you did just get an electric appliance here to do a thing, a kitchen cloth. Could have done. I have a feeling that that's what most people do, but I might be wrong. But you could replace this entire device with a cloth. No, we stop buying stupid ass electronics. Also, e-waste is also the fastest growing category of waste today. So getting tons of electric appliances like this is just a really bad idea because they are gonna break and you don't know what to do with them when they break, so you just end up throwing them away. And that's bad. Okay. I saw I saw this yesterday and Loki I've been giggling at it ever since. So here we have someone who bought a beautiful marble paper towel holder and look what happens now. Now it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just spending money on something that looks nice. But the part that looks nice you cover. It doesn't matter. It's just this type of consumerism just really gets to me in a deeply tragic but also very comical way. <laughs> Don't buy things where the main selling point is that it looks nice but the part that looks nice is something you're gonna cover up anyway. It just seems like a big waste of money and resources and your time. Another thing I don't think is a kitchen must-have is a fry wall. So this piece of silicone you put on your pan and then all the oil and fat when you fry something, it goes on the fry wall instead of on the stove. So you don't have to clean your kitchen counter. You can just throw this in the dishwasher instead. Now, I have very limited trust in a product like this. First of all, I don't know how this is gonna react continuously if you keep using it on direct heat, like on the pan directly. I don't know how this is gonna react to that in the long run. So I don't know if this is simply just something that'll work a couple of times and then it won't work. Also, the wall, is it floppy? Is it not floppy? Will it get floppy? I'm always very curious about things getting floppy like that. But the main thing, the main thing is cloth 
you can just clean your kitchen counter and you didn't need to spend $20. I didn't know this was a thing, but look look what happens here. This is the Chillomatic, and you take some ice cubes, and then you take your lukewarm soda, and you put the ice cubes in the little box, and then you spin it, and then suddenly your soda is cooler. And the person in the video is saying that it doesn't splash and go everywhere when you open it, but... Uh, you can also, and hear me out on this, because I can see you have a fridge or a freezer, because you have ice cubes. You can put your soda in there. I don't think anyone has a life that is so important that you need your drink chilled now. Not in two minutes, but fucking now. I don't think anyone is in this much of a hurry. This shit is gonna break and you have no chance of fixing it. <laughs> no, but the thing is, um, there are so many products that seems to, seeks to, aims at reducing the inconvenience of peeling carrots. And I don't see it as an inconvenience. You open your bin or your compost bucket and you peel into that and you close it and you're done. But first of all, can we agree that this is a shit peeler? This is so shitty. This is not how a peeler is supposed to peel. Mm -mm. No, so this is bad. Also, now you have the inconvenience of scraping out the peels from this little shitty plastic container and washing that. So I don't think you're saving time. In this video, there's some real science going on and he claims that you will save 70% of peeling time. It will save you up to 70% of time on your weekly peeling. I think we all have experienced we're standing there in the kitchen, we're prepping stuff and we're thinking to ourselves, gosh, I wish I could cut my peeling time with 70%. This is a shit product. It's a shit peeler. It would have been a shit peeler without the little bucket on it, but the little bucket makes it shittier. Don't spend your hard-earned money buying this stuff. This is something I have seen many times, also in stores, and I'm always picking it up and using it like this because it's very satisfying. Like the multi-scissors, it's very satisfying to, to, to use it. But this is not the best demonstration video because every single one of these things gets stuck in between the scissor blades. And that's the main issue I see with this product overall. Also, it's just a shit pair of scissors. You can get really nice sharp pair of scissors, but you also already have an alternative to this at home. It's a knife or a pair of scissors. Also, I am 100% sure that this actually takes a longer time to do rather than if you just use a regular knife or scissor because you have to get out all the individual stuff in between the blades. It's This is one of these things that it seems like a smart idea, right? You have this speed with one pair of scissors. So you have three blades, you have this speed. Like it makes sense, like the math is mathing here. Someone is girl bossing all the way to the sun with these fucking products, I'm so excited. But this is mainly to say that you don't need this stuff. And there are so many other products that we don't need. But it's very hard sometimes to filter through what we need and what we don't need. Mainly because all these products are advertised to us so laissez-faire as must-haves. This is a late stage capitalism crime to name these things must-haves. None of these things are must-haves. There are, in fact, very few real must-haves. When we're looking at kitchen must-haves, I would say a knife is probably a must-have and some sort of cooking device. May it be a pot, may it be a pan. I hope that you liked this video. Let me know if you want me to react to more useless crap because we can easily do that. We can, we can easily make that our weekend tradition, no problem. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then. Oh, and by the way, let me know if you own any of these products. There's no shame. There's only love and positivity on here. It seems like a lie, but it really isn't. Let me know down below if you have any of these products and if they actually work or if they are as shit as I think they are. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!